Hello, Fempreneurs, and welcome back to the Fempreneur Podcast. Today's episode is a solo episode where you get me and only me, and I have some really, really fantastic information to share with you to help you with your marketing. So think of this as a mini workshop you should block a little bit of time, 15, 20 minutes. We're going to get to work. We're going to improve your marketing during today's episode. So pen and notebook would be awesome. And you're definitely going to want to get yourself video ready after you're done listening to this or watching this so that you can go and implement this on your social media. So before I dive right into teaching mode, well, that's not true. I'm going to be teaching you sneakily while I tell you a story. <laughs> Uh, something that I always preach is whenever possible, teach via telling a story. And so that's what I'm going to do today. And this is a true story based on a character who is a real human, who is someone that just completed Fempreneur Marketing School. Um, exciting, uh, really exciting things have happened to her throughout marketing school. And she has felt really overwhelmed at times. So it's one of those be careful what you wish for things. So if you're someone who's been trying and trying and trying to get the right clients and just to get maybe clients at all, and you're feeling really frustrated and you're feeling overwhelmed from the fact that you're, you're doing all the things, but the clients aren't coming and the, the source of overwhelm could be financial for you. Now, I'm not going to go too far into the financial side of things right now, but I will say to you that if you have zero income streams and you're putting all of the earning pressure on your baby business, or maybe your business isn't a baby, you've had it for a while, but for some reason there's a bit of a lull right now in new clients, you wanna take the earning pressure off your business and get a side hustle. Something that doesn't suck your time and energy like in huge amounts, definitely something that doesn't uh, suck your creativity, and preferably something that's going to allow you to meet other people, to allow you to interact with other humans. Now you can put yourself out there on Upwork, because you're a business owner, you have amazing talents that other business owners maybe don't have, like email marketing, maybe building things in Canva. You might take these things for granted, but there are lots of new business owners that will pay you and hire you to do things in their businesses. So maybe put yourself on Upwork, maybe do some driving for Uber Eats or for Uber or skip the dishes. Find some sort of way to make a little bit of money in the short period, in the short term so that during this period of time, you can still have seed money to invest in your business and pay your bills, and you can still be showing up on social media with that amazing energy that attracts people versus that desperate, I'm broke energy that we can't hide usually when we're feeling that way. So that was my little um, bit of teaching on multiple income streams. And even as an entrepreneur today, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 21 years old, I'm just turned 42, and I have always had multiple income streams, so I can't stress that enough. Um, I like to have income streams that, uh, you know, that I that are not jobs. I like to have income streams that are all from, you know, contracts that I choose. Um, but you can think of being hired by a company like, you know, Skip the Dishes as a contract. It's something you can turn on, you can turn off. You're in control. So it all depends uh, how you look at it. So back to my main character of this story, she, who recently graduated from Femfer Marketing School, she was so overwhelmed. Um, a big part of why she joined marketing school was because she was overwhelmed. She was like, I need to get something going. It's really difficult to, you know, have these couple of kids that I have full time and work. Um, a job just isn't flexible enough, or at least I haven't found a job that's flexible enough. Here are all my skills and talents. Um, what what are we gonna do here? Like I have some ideas, a business I wanna start, I have a business already that's really not going that well. And so what I did right off the bat was I hired her to do some stuff for me and discovered really quickly that she's amazing at it. So we started putting her out there on social media as someone that can do these things. Now, what happened over the last three months while she was in marketing, marketing school was her what she was saying over and over again, and I, I didn't I didn't come up with this word, this was the word she was using over and over again. She was saying overwhelmed, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And she didn't just say it, I could hear it in her voice. I could see it in her body language on our video calls. So just, if you don't know, Femfurner Marketing School includes two one-on-ones with me each month. So a total of six one-on-ones over the three months. And so we shifted quite quickly from 
the overwhelm and that exasperated tone being from lack of business and lack of you know income streams to being like oh my gosh i have this client and i have now this other client and i'm doing proposals and i'm being asked to create these things and people are throwing money at me and i'm really busy and so i was noticing this uh sort of theme with her and as a mom she's a mom i'm a mom my son's now you know graduated and moved out of the house this this year but I do remember the days of him being young and, you know, putting him in front of the TV to do two or three hours of work and sometimes feeling like quite often actually feeling that mom guilt of maybe I should be playing Scrabble or, you know, going to throw the ball and, you know, grab the baseball gloves and go throw the ball with him. Maybe I'm supposed to be doing something with him and not working on my business right now. But I chose to take the risk <laughs> that I was doing the right thing and that I was building the business and not always choosing to build the business over him, but many times. And so I was sharing some of these stories with her and I was saying, you have, uh, we, we all have overwhelm. We all feel like we're not getting enough done. We all feel like our to-do list is longer than the number of hours in the day. I have never talked to anyone that doesn't feel like that, but we all have a choice. We get, we have a choice about where this feeling comes from and how we choose to label it. So first of all, where is the feeling coming from? Is it coming from us not doing anything new, not doing anything different? And this could feel very familiar for you if you're not doing anything new or different with your marketing, but you're feeling like your business isn't growing or like you don't have the online presence that you should have for your amazing credentials and all of your years of experience, but you just haven't kind of gotten out of your own way to do something about it, to hire a web designer, to figure out what branding and marketing actually is and how to do it. Join my marketing school if that's you, by the way. The link to do so is in the show notes. So is, is, your, is your sense of, oh my gosh, I don't have enough going on. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough, you know, hours in the day to complete all this stuff. Is that coming from, you know, option A, which I just described, or is that coming from option B over here, which we're gonna get into in a minute. So for this client of mine, this marketing school participant, she started to recognize that she kind of had a tendency to just do that all the time in life. She was kind of over here more so, where she was like, no matter what the source of this feeling was, she was always labeling, labeling it as the O word, overwhelm. That was just a word that was in her vocabulary that she was saying all the time. And of course, that is a very negative word. So ultimately, you can, you can choose to describe her, her situation at this point. Business is coming in, clients are coming in, money's in her bank account, the financial stress is gone, at least very much so. Is financial stress ever completely gone? Probably not, but you know what I mean. It's been completely alleviated um, in the short term anyways. So now she's still having the same feelings and she's still saying the same things, but for different reasons. So then I said to her, it sounds like you just have a labeling issue. <laughs> like you're just labeling this wrong. You should be labeling this as, oh my gosh, this is what I said I wanted a month ago. I wanted clients. I wanted to be sought after and super busy and, you know, just have all sorts of things on the go and have money coming in and having, having people offer me money to do things and actually have to turn some of them away because I can't do all the things for all the people. You wanted this. And she was like, Oh, yeah. And actually to back up a little bit, even before that, when she was still in this state of, oh my gosh, I don't have enough business. I don't have enough money. We had a conversation about the fact that she was kind of pointing some of that frustration at her kids, that her kids, because she loves them and wants to spend time with them. There was this constant feeling of mom guilt when she turned you know, turned away from them and said, okay, watch a movie kids. I'm going into the office to do some work on my business. She was feeling so overwhelmed by that, that she was often just succumbing to it and then not getting things done that were on her to-do list to set up her business, to make updates to her website, to create different things that she knew she needed to create to get her online presence looking the way she wanted it to. And eventually I said, you know, well, you, you really are gifting your children with something incredible by growing a business right in front of their eyes. Think of how many kids don't get to see that. A lot of kids hear, mommy's going to work, daddy's going to work, and kids have no idea what that even means. Kids don't often even know what their parents do for work. So her kids were doing very much what, or are doing very much what my son got to do, which is watch mom build a business, right? Sometimes she's gonna teach you how to cook a new instant meal, like, you know, a new craft dinner, a new itchy ban, a new, 
cut up a hot dog and throw it in a pot. And I don't know, like sometimes we're going to do things like that so we can grow our business. Not all the time. But when you're a mom, you have you have different trade offs than people who grow businesses without young children at home. So if, if you're someone that needs to hear this to maybe remove some of the mom guilt and replace it with, with some of that, oh, wow, this is a blessing for my kids or my child to grow up seeing mom grow a business, then I hope that you take that message and you run with it. And I hope you know that the gift of them seeing you grow a business is better than the opposite, which is not a gift at all. And this is what this particular woman was falling into. There was there was some resentment happening there. There was a little too much negativity around this idea of, and these are not her words at all, but I was getting the sense that she felt like the kids were in the way and they were they were blocking her from growing her business as quickly as she wanted to. And so I nipped that right in the butt and I was like, no, 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 this is a you problem. This is a mindset problem. This is also the fact that you haven't realized what a gift it is to your children to allow them to be behind the scenes in your business. And at some point very soon, you're going to get to give them things to do in your business and pay them, which is what I got to do with my son. I hired him to build the directory page for my website. Um, there were a couple other website things that he did for me. I even had him do some website work for a client after that. Turns out that he doesn't really like that kind of thing and he didn't want to do it. Um, because he likes people too much. He doesn't like sitting at a computer, but he, you know, he was able to do it and he was able to participate and understand, you know, he was, he was in the car a lot of times we were driving back and forth from school and I'd be on the phone with a client and he was listening to the entire conversation. He understood what I did in my business because he was in it. One of the things that's in this amazing marketing school guidebook is this picture here. This was the first ever headshot that I had done. Oh in uh, when I was working for a large international investment firm I had braces on that picture so I had to keep my mouth closed we tried it without and like of course the lights were just shining off my mouth so this was me in 2013 when I first started working as a financial advisor and so this was me pretty much I was a goldfish wearing a shark fin I was faking it till I made it y'all and then I started uh well then I got fired and then the cool thing about getting fired was that I was able to market myself. I was able to do marketing the way I wanted to do marketing. And for some reason, it just clicked with me that marketing was simply building relationships with the right people using the internet as the kind of, you know, communication tool. But the way I was doing that was by having real conversations. So building relationships always starts with real conversations. Would you not agree? So right now, I said at the beginning of this episode that um, I said at the beginning of this episode that you are going to actually experience a workshop in today's podcast episode. So what I want you to do is start with writing down three ways you can start having more conversations with people on social media. So what I encourage you to do but with these three things is the first one should be a question about something that you're curious about. So think of a survey question. If you had a room full of your niche people and you were allowed to give them one survey question, what would it be? So if you're a, maybe you're a psychologist, maybe you're, you're a psychologist who wants to work with divorced women, what's the one thing you wanna know about all of them? Maybe you wanna start hosting a monthly free workshop as a lead magnet and you're curious to know what time of day is best for these ladies to attend. And let's just remove the question of whether or not they want to attend, they want to attend. When is the best time for them to attend? It's if a lot of them are working, it's usually morning, early morning before the kiddos are up or evening, right? But maybe you just have two possible answers, maybe three morning, you know, before the kids get up and uh, or evening um, after they're in bed or it doesn't matter. I'm good to go either way. Maybe those are your three options. So this is something to put on social media. Okay. Doesn't matter how you do it, maybe you do it in a video like this, which is, I think, the best way. And you say, you know, comment below or shoot me a DM. Um, you can say the survey is on my website. Could you go over there and answer it? Pretty, pretty, please. And here's the other thing that I teach you how to do in marketing school is when they answer that question, you automatically give them a free gift. And of course, you also get their email address in the process. And if that's something that you've been wanting to do with your marketing forever and ever and ever, um, you need to join marketing school. By the way, 
um, the October class, uh, once that one is, you know, closed for signups, the next available class isn't until July 2025. So if you happen to be listening to this and you don't want to wait till July 2025, there is an online community available called Fem Squad, and that is at yycfempreneurs.com. You can also get the link to join Fem Squad in the show notes. There's not, uh, there's no one-on-one -on -one included in the monthly membership fee, but there's a ton of training. I walk you through everything that's in marketing school and more. Um, and you can actually add some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me if I have time available. If some, I don't right now, but sometimes I do end up with a bit of time available for some uh, extra one-on-one -on -one coaching to add to the online courses that are in Fem Squad. So um, back on track is, I guess I wanted to also just mention that um, when you're doing your questions to start conversations with people, on social media, if your first one is going to be one of those burning questions you have about how to get people to like my free lead magnet thing, um, my niche people, of course, not everybody, maybe one of your questions is kind of like to back it up before that is to figure out who your niche is. Maybe you're not even sure yet. Maybe you're a psychologist that you don't know who you want to work with. And right now on your website, it says, I work with kids. I work with families. I work with women i work with all ages of women like no, no 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 maybe you need to dial it in a little more and find a niche right which is something we do in marketing school something i help my clients with so one question that you could put out to social media and again it doesn't really matter if people answer these questions or not what matters is that you're seeming like someone who cares you're taking the time to ask these questions which positions you above everyone else that hasn't asked them a question lately, right? Questions and being curious are what people lean into. People love to talk about their number one priority, which is themselves. So ask a question, say, hey, um, I'm curious to, to know who's out there in my audience. I'm wondering if I should specialize my services to work with children or to work with, you know, women who've been divorced. I'm curious to know what you recommend, what you think I should do, right? Which of these would you be more likely to hire me for might be the better question, right? So that could be another question you could use in social media. Now brainstorm a third one. Again, this is how you get to know your audience. This is how you seem curious. This is how you start conversations and conversations are how marketing actually happens. Marketing is building relationships with the right people. So are you doing that right now on social media or are you just posting stock images from Canva with, you know, inspirational quotes on them? Because that's not necessarily going to inspire anyone to do something and of course these three questions that you put on social media I would hope that they would um, get people back to your website somehow and that when people get to your website they aren't confused about who you serve and what you do and who you are but that's a whole other uh, you know course for another time so I hope you've written down three awesome Instagram post ideas I'm going to leave you with a few more right now this is another little gem from marketing school whoa going the wrong way here um, this is the, uh, what are we going to call this? This is the, these are the four types of posts. Oh my gosh, you can see my chip nail polish. That's terrible. Whatever. Uh, I'm not a perfectionist. So we've got four types of posts here just for fun, promote me, educate and promote others. So write those down, leave a little a bit of space under each heading just for fun, promote me, educate and promote others. Now, I've been traveling around on Vancouver Island for the last five weeks and uh, not traveling around too much, really just hanging out mostly in the Comox Valley. And uh, my dad lives here. He's actually in a, a care home in Campbell River. And so I've been spending time here mostly because I wanted to be close to him um, before I take off to Mexico for the winter. So um, I have been doing a lot of the promote others, which is be mostly because I like I like craft beer and I really like craft breweries. I like the vibe. Like if I could go to a different craft brewery every day of my life and sit on the patio and like just meet people and hang out, I would do it. It's my favorite thing. Like, I don't know if there's a job where you can do that. Maybe I need to start a business where I just do like, anyways, that's a whole other thing for another day. But what I do is I take a selfie or a picture, or a little video, and sometimes I have the dogs with me. I'm usually bringing another dog with my dog along on the adventure and, you know, they're with me and I take a little video and, you know, I, I usually get a flight if it's someplace I haven't been before. So I kind of pan the video over my flight, my four different beers, down to the dogs, up to my face, taking a sip, and then I tag them in it. So that's a way that I promote others. I do that with locally owned businesses quite often. 
Now you don't want to do just that, of course, but that type of post helps you get noticed by other businesses, audiences, right? Because if they share that to their story, which they usually do, especially if they have 5,000 or less followers, they usually share it to their stories. Actually, I want to change that number to 10,000 or less followers. Um, they usually share it to their story if it's a good quality video and you know, it's not too long and drawn out. Another tip for these promote others videos that if you put it on your story and you tag them, keep it to under 15 seconds. Um, and I usually don't talk in them, right? I might put a little bit of text and be like, oh, delicious new beers I'm trying out or something simple, right? Um, they share it on their stories and particularly in Calgary, because my community is predominantly in Calgary. When I do this in Calgary, they are more likely to do that to reshare it to their story than a company out here on Vancouver Island because my audience is mostly in Calgary. They're probably looking at targeting more people here. Who knows? The point is the promote others type of post is really excellent for you getting exposure to other Instagram accounts, to those, those other businesses' audiences. And this works awesome, awesome well. Um, so do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, my, my recommendation to you is once a week, do one of these promote others posts on your Instagram. You can do it on Facebook too. You can tag other businesses. I don't really do much on Facebook these days. I'm all about Instagram right now and YouTube. Um, so the other three types of posts again are just for fun. Pretty obvious what that is. A little behind the scenes into your life. Um, educate, teach them something about what you do, teach them something about what you know that is that niche knowledge that you have. And then the promote me one is very simple. You're not promoting me, Lindsay Berry, you're promoting yourself. This is where you promote yourself. What kind of package do you offer? What kind of product do you have? Do you have a special on a service? Do you, you know, have some sort of products on your website or packages that you never talk about on social media. You should be talking about them, but not all the time. You want to mix it up with the four types of posts. So I, so I hope you have some great post ideas written down. So if you're someone who maybe needs to relabel some of those feelings you're having around, oh my gosh, um, I have too much on my plate, then I encourage you to do that. Now, if you're someone who is struggling to find clients, maybe you need to pivot in some way, join my marketing school. I'd love to get into your business with you um, because you get, of course, group sessions with the other women in marketing school and you get one-on-one -on -one with me. And you need to be signed up by the end of the first week of October. If there's still spots left by the time you're listening to this or watching this, as long as you're signed up by the end of the first week of October 2024, you're good to go. And we're going to have three full months of working together and you're going to have three group sessions with the other ladies. Those happen on the second Wednesday of October, November, and December at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And other than those three times, everything else is completely customized to your schedule and it's completely flexible. So it's the most incredible online learning experience for those who feel like marketing is a pain point. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to help you out with your marketing and get you in there and have you, whether or not you're a mompreneur, have you leave the marketing school with new ways of looking at things with new, a new system for your marketing that really is sustainable, a way that you can be consistent with your online marketing. And also just a way to relabel those feelings that come over us all the time and relabel those with words um, from the gratitude column instead of from the negativity column, right? So thank goodness I'm so sought after and that people want to throw money at me for my talents and abilities. That would be another way of looking at it. So let's get you there. My name is Lindsay Berry and I would love to connect with you on Instagram. You can find me at YYC Fempreneurs and you can sign up for uh, marketing school at yycfempreneurs.com. All right, bye for now.